So when we came home from our first trip to the United States, we were gone for like six weeks. Uh, we got back and there were four massive fruits laying on the porch. So I asked Popsy, what are those? They kind of look like jackfruit, which we have over on the other side of the property. He said, no, there's soursop, also called guayaba. And not to be confused with guava. Guava is like little. This is guayaba and it's big, but also called soursop. Um, and so we had four. We kept one. We gave Popsy one because it's just him and his wife. And we gave Timo two because he's got a bunch of kids. So <laughs> we figured he could feed them with that, that thing. But this is the soursop tree here. This is the first time we've actually come up to look for it. We have never even walked on this side of our property. So if I were... <laughs> Sometimes you hear things in the jungle, you're not quite sure what they are. What was that? It was a big bird over there. It was there. a huge bird. Okay, anyway, <laughs> we didn't see it. Um, but the ocean is down this way. The road is up this way. So we are on the uh, far left-hand side of our property as we're facing the ocean. This is our property line right here. The fence literally is right there, like 20 feet. Um, so this is our soursop tree here. First time we found it. Uh, we also, Popsy told us we have a big mango tree, which is behind you, Brian, if you want to show them that. So we have this massive mango tree here. We have two others on the property. But they're up on the road at either end of our property line, so we have to be really fast to get those off of there because otherwise the neighbors are in them. Uh, we did get one off of there, and it was literally the sweetest mango I've ever had. Now, there is a mango steen, which is a highly prized fruit tree, somewhere around here. And Popsy has brought me one so far, and uh, he brought the house sitters that were here while we were gone one that was ripe. I have no idea which tree it is though, but uh, so I'm going to zoom in. We, we know this is the soursop because we saw a couple fruit, so I'll zoom in on that for you so you can see that on the tree, and then we're going to go down to the house and cut open the soursop that Popsy brought for us. Okay, we're up at the soursop tree with our soursop expert, Popsy, in his Panama hat, which we all love. <laughs> and he's going to help me figure out when a soursop is ripe and when it's not. So we have this one, we have the sun behind us, but I'm gonna try to zoom in on it. Okay, there we go. Okay, Popsy, tell us why that is not ripe. Cause okay. it's big. Yes, it's big, but it's not ripe because you see the green uh -huh. is a deep green. Okay. And the little stickers that are on it, uh -huh. it have on plenty and it's still long. Okay. When it gets shorter is when it's ripe and it change the green to a light green. Okay, so Popsy says dark green and lots of kind of long uh, spikes on it means that it's not ready. We need to get it a little lighter. Oh, we have a bunch up top there too. Oh, there's a bunch. Okay, so let's go find one that is ripe. Okay, so now Popsy says this one is ripe. And we know because see how much lighter green it is in color than the other one? Um, it still has spikes on it, but not quite as long. So that lighter green color tells you it's ripe. So that one's ripe. It's hard to see in this camera, but there's one right up above it. I think that's it, that's ripe. And there was, oh, there's another one that's hidden in the leaves. It's kind of hard to see. But the, um, it doesn't really matter quite as much how big they are, does it? Because some of the smaller ones um, can still be ripe. Right. So you just have to watch for that color change. Okay, we can do that. So hopefully we will be having some soursop here in the next couple days. All right, so hold on. Okay, so Popsy's gone home. Brian and I are here to harvest those three soursops. Now, Popsy said they're not 100% ripe. He said, pick them now because they're hard-ish. So when they hit the ground, they won't split. But then you need to let them sit until they get soft to the touch. Okay, so let's see if Brian can get these down. Let's see if I can. This is our coconut hook. There's one. We're lucky it'll roll all the way home. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens to you if you slip in the mud. Okay, there's one. I have a hard time finding these. Yeah.
perfect. Good grief. Oh, that one stopped. Nope. 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 We're going. We're going. Uh, it's, yeah, it's gone. Well, they're both kind of going the same place on the other side of the mango steam. Okay, and one more. Whoop, missed it. Boy, he doesn't want to come down. Ah! Well, I think they're all kind of going the same general direction. Okay, now it's time to go like Easter egg hunting, but for ostrich sized Easter eggs. We have found the three soursop <laughs> in the jungle. So now we have three more and the guys are really excited because uh, what you're going to see next, we're actually filming this after we filmed the next part of this video, which is the recipe part. Um, and the guys are super excited because the next day after the recipe, that stuff was so good. And the guys were like, oh my God, we have to have more than this. Okay, so it's about a week later or so, and Popsy brought me another soursop. So I wanted to actually try a recipe this time. Look, I barely know what this fruit is, much less trying to cook with it. Well, I mean, not really cook with it, but basically what I'm going to do is make a soursop smoothie. So uh, I will link this recipe below. Uh, I found several recipes online, and I kind of just had to adjust them with the, what I had available here. Um, so I kind of took a little from this recipe, a little from that recipe, a little from this recipe and made my own, which means it's either going to be really good or it's going to suck massively. Either way, you get to be witness to it. Okay, so we have the soursop and we already know what happens when we cut into that. Let me tell you right now, I ain't no Martha Stewart, so don't expect that kind of quality. Okay, um, all right, so, uh, we've cut it. We see that we have some seeds here, so I'm going to set those aside because, again, I'm going to plant uh, these soursop seeds, and I already know that I'm going to encounter a bunch more in here in just a little bit. Uh, we can see that it's this beautiful, creamy white fruit. And basically what I'm going to do is take the pulp out of it. So I'm going to... I have to do two things. I have to get the pulp out of it and put that into the blender, but I have to discard... Remember when I did that taste test uh, thing with it here a minute ago? Of course you do, because for me it was a week ago, but for you it was like three minutes ago. Um, this kind of core here that I said wasn't so flavorful, um, everything that I read said take that part out. So you're just left with the pulp. And then several different recipes had several different things going on with this uh, pulp. Some of them wanted you to strain it through a strainer and do this whole process where you take the juice out of it, I guess. There's a little bad piece. Um, I'm going to put that over here for the compost pile. Um, I don't know. Then I found some recipes that said that you didn't have to do that straining and remove the juice. And the less work I have to do, the better I like it. So we're going to go with this way. So I've got the core taken out of that one. Let me get the core out of this one. All right, that comes out quite easily. And this one again has a little bad spot in it, but I'm not, I'm not sweating it. Stuff in the jungle isn't perfect. Cut around it and eat on, my friend. Okay, so we're gonna cut this little piece out. I mean, the good news is no worms. So, <laughs> that's the good news. All right, so now what I'm gonna do now that I have the core out is I'm just gonna kinda go through here with my fingers and pull this pulp out. That's another piece of core. Uh, pull this pulp out, making sure that I remove the seeds and the peel as I do it, and then just put it into the blender. Again, these seeds can be a little aggravating to get out of here. Um, so, yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna be doing that, and then once I get it all in here, 
then uh, we'll come back and do the next step. All right, 10 minutes and 50 bug bites later, uh, we have a pile of compost and seeds, and we have about a half a blender full of soursop pulp. Okay, so now let's add the rest of the ingredients. So we need uh, about two and a half cups of milk, and I just so happen to have almond milk, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, this is a vanilla flavored almond milk. That's two cups and boy, that seems like a lot. I don't have like normal measuring cups. I don't know where they are. Okay. All right, we'll put a little bit more in there. Make two and a half-ish. Okay. So there's that portion of our program. Uh, then we need like a can of condensed sweetened milk. Holy moly, thank goodness this has no calories. Okay. I've never done a cooking show before. It's kind of fun. Okay, uh, there's that. Now for our uh, like seasonings. Okay, so we're going to put in a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Fun fact, this property used to have vanilla orchids growing on it um, that produce vanilla beans, which means we would be able to produce our own vanilla instead of buying this artificial vanilla flavoring junk that I'm not super keen on, but beggars can't be choosers around here. So we're gonna put a teaspoon of that in, and maybe next time I do this, I'll uh, have found some vanilla orchids to, to plant and start growing some vanilla beans. So if you're interested in that, subscribe. We'll be doing gardening videos fairly regularly, I have a feeling. Okay, next up is a half a teaspoon of canela or cinnamon, as it's commonly referred to. So a half a teaspoon of that. Cinnamon, fun fact, um, I have a cinnamon tree on this property. So says Popsy. I don't know where it is, but eventually I'm going to find it and harvest cinnamon. Subscribe, we'll do it together. Okay, and the last thing is a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. See how I'm getting rained on out here? Living in a rainforest. Okay, so a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Nutmeg, fun fact, I have a nutmeg tree on my property. So says Popsy. So at some point in time, we're gonna go harvest nutmeg. Subscribe and do it with me. All right, so we have everything in there. Now I just have to figure out how to turn this on because I'm not really much of a blender person. Okay, I'm not going to subject you to the entire blendering process, but I'll let you know about how long it takes to do it. All right, here we go. Okay. this filled up the blender quite perfectly oh wow it smells really good Brian come smell this he has it on a tripod he's all fancy right now that smells good yeah it smells really good all right so but the ultimate test is how does it taste okay so and we're not gonna fake you out if it's nasty we'll tell you it's nasty we're not like the Today Show here trying to sell something oh it's pretty goopy so yeah, it's pretty goopy. So I probably would put like more almond milk in or something next time, but I did end up putting the, the amount that it called for, which was two and a half. So I don't know. And some seeds did get in there because I could hear them knocking around in the blender. Okay, Brian, you have to come get on camera now. Your favorite, I know. Here you go. Okay, cheers, cheers. to soursop. It's like soursop pudding. It is. It's like soursop pudding. 
it's good. Not a bad taste. It's not a bad taste. I would use this as like a dessert pudding, though, not like a drink drink, unless I put more liquid in it. But if I put more liquid in it, I'd have to do more things. All right, so there's your soursop recipe. If you had a soursop, I would definitely try it. Like I said, it makes a really good pudding, and probably after it chills, it will taste good too. I would assume you would want to eat it fairly quickly so it doesn't oxidize or whatever in the refrigerator. But there you have it. Sour sop on my property that we made a recipe out of. It's pretty exciting. For more Panama gardening videos and all kinds of videos about Panama, make sure you subscribe. And I will see you next Friday.